This is Susan Wheelbanks with BlendedInsight.com. I am a holistic and integrative healing arts practitioner, an intuitive, and an energy healer. In this podcast, I share tips, tools, and suggestions that have helped me along my path in hopes of inspiring and helping you along yours. Let's get started with today's podcast topic. Hello, Bright Soul. Thank you so much for joining me on another podcast. And I wanted to say I appreciate all of your suggestions with getting my voice back and my sense of smell. You all are so amazing. Even when I was talking about the chiropractor, you all sent me the best suggestions. You're amazing. I appreciate you so much. And I'm going to go right into the topic for today. So one of the things I've shared before is a quote that I heard years ago that has stuck with me that I find to be so relevant and so true is, do not tell small minds your big dreams. Why? Because when you are doing something new, when you have been given a vision, when you have been working on manifesting, when you're working on doing something outside of the tribe, the vision inside you cannot be seen by people who are looking through the lens of their own limitations. Something may not be possible for them because of their thoughts, their beliefs, their actions, whatever they it, whatever it is that they're seeing, their blocks. But that does not mean that it is not true for you. And another thing that I learned is when someone is doubting, my response typically is, I understand that may be true for you. However, it is not true for me. This helps me to maintain my power. It helps me to stand in my truth. And I don't need to share with people things about what's been given to me when it's inside me to live out. And I'm not talking about things where we might be out of touch with reality or we've made things up or we're being unrealistic about something. Although sometimes miracles can be perceived as something unrealistic, but miracles happen every day. I'm not talking about something that's outlandish out there. I'm talking about a vision that's been given to you, something very strong. It's intuitively led. Your soul is lining you up on this path and you know it doesn't make sense to other people and maybe it doesn't even make sense to you, but you are day-to-day checking in and following that path because you are following a vision. You're following your intuition. You're following your soul's guidance and people who are not aligned try to knock you off of that path. And it's okay because usually, and I'm giving the benefit of the doubt here, they're doing it to try to protect you. They're doing it because they don't want to see you fail. They don't want to see you get hurt. So there's an element of compassion. You don't have to get ugly or vicious about it. However, you don't have to allow it to throw seeds of doubt into your dreams, into your vision, into your soul's path and what's in alignment for you. And I can say, I remember a time when When I was getting out of the military, I had no support, no support. No one supported my decision to get out of the military. Although I will say my mother was, she was like, oh yeah, just get out. But that's kind of been, that's just sort of her attitude toward anything. She would, you know, if she didn't like something, she would just instantly quit it. So it wasn't necessarily from place of responsibility or support. It's just her personality. I'll tell you, everyone else is was just like, well, you've been in over almost 13 years. Why would you get out now? You're so close to 20. But inside me, I knew that I did not want to leave my daughter anymore. I had to leave her. I had a short notice deployment. Her father was deployed. I didn't have any stable family members that could take her. And I had to leave her with someone from church that she barely knew. It was very traumatizing for me. And I just thought, I I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to leave my daughter anymore. And I don't care that it's close to 20 years. This isn't working for me anymore. And the more I tuned in and I had, I was in a church at the time and I had talked to leadership and stuff and they wouldn't really give me the answers. Um, They wouldn't really give me much guidance on it because nobody supported me getting out. They thought it was a terrible idea, but inside me, I knew this is the right idea for me. And so I had to get out following my soul's guidance with no support, even after I got out and I was they give you unemployment while you're looking for another job because I had moved out to somewhere, didn't work out. So I moved again. And so I was figuring this out and, you know, whatever I had saved and I'm a single mom and all these things. My family members were even saying, can you go back in? One of my mentors that was in the military, can you go back in? And it made me a little angry because I thought you have no faith in me as a person. But Again, it's just that their limited vision is with limited possibilities, limited opportunities. And so they're doing it from a place of care. 
So I just realized I can't talk to them anymore about this. And I've got to dig in and find people who are going to support me where I am now and help me to get through this. And so I've taken that instance. And I remember how I felt when I was sharing where I'm at and looking for reassurance, looking for support, and being told to turn back to the very thing that I was told intuitively to walk away from, and how people could not see what I could see. And they they were doubting me. They were doubting my ability to function in the civilian world, I guess, or function at a level that I knew that I could function. And so over the years, I've just learned that I don't really tell people things when I'm in transition. I don't really tell people things in the beginning when I'm starting something in the beginning because I don't need their thought forms. I don't need their negativity. And sometimes it comes from a place of jealousy or they're seeing you do something that they themselves feel like they can't do. So they try to throw stones at it because it is challenging their own insecurities. It's challenging their own path their own inability or unwillingness to follow that big, scary step. And so what I want to say is doubt those people because those people are only functioning from their own limitations, from their own lens. It's almost like an eyeglass prescription. If you wear eyeglasses and you have a certain prescription and I put your glasses on and it's not the same or even similar to mine, I'm probably not going to be able to see a single thing. But for you, that prescription has been tailored to you your path, what you need, your eyesight. And so for you, you can see clearly. It's not that I'm wrong or that you're wrong. It's just that we are seeing a different thing. Our lens are different. The lenses that we're viewing the world from are different. So it's not to get angry or upset or even let it to discourage you because it's more or less just looking at people. That's where they are. That's as far as they can see. That's their limitations. Their limitations are not mine. And we all do it on some level. And I'm sure I've done it because, again, we view the world through what's inside, through what we've placed on ourselves. Very few people are actually open to a vast realm of possibility. And we all have upper limits and things we've had to work through in the past that we are continually working through on ourselves and navigating the world through these lenses and trying to shift it. And most people aren't doing the type of work you're doing. Most people are just doing what's been shown to them. Very few people are reaching outside of what's been shown to step out of the tribal shaming, to step out of the confines of the tribe and, you know, be a way shower, pave a new path, be a cycle breaker. And I know that's you and I know that's me. So some of the things you just got to keep fueling yourself, keep yourself going, stay connected to that soul's path. And when people are doubting you, doubt them right back. I doubt your doubt in me. I doubt your doubt about what I'm doing with my life. And you can feel the energy of it. And again, this isn't to have you get upset about it. It's just knowing where people are at. That's one of the things I really love about my gifts of reading people. I don't read people to be ugly or egotistical or any of those things. I read them to see where they're at so that I know how to interact with that person and how much of a realm of influence I would like for them to be able to have in my life. Because I'm not going to take advice from people who don't have a life like the one that I want. They're not qualified to speak into my life. If you're not living a life similar to the one that I'm desiring, why am I going to listen to you? Unless you're coming in as a teacher and we know the energy because we're sensitive to the energy. So I'm also not going to get upset with people who are not living in accordance to the way that I want to live when they don't see or believe what I'm choosing to do. So that's all I wanted to offer to you. Let's go into a healing. You can uncross your arms and legs. I will turn the healing on.
Okay, and so it is. You can come back into your body. And friends, I want to thank you so much for being here. As always, you have an open invitation to check out our High Vibe Lightworker Tribe over on Patreon. The link is in the show notes and also the Pause Breathwork app. I know I mention it every week. I just want to let you know there are resources to support you that is also linked in the show notes. And as always, I want to wish you a beautiful week. Take care. Bye-bye.